Welcome to my channel and I'm back with you once again with another video of Microsoft Flight Simulator 24. Nowadays, I'm exploring the Vision Jet and in this regard, I'm planning to make a series of videos for the beginners so that it's easy for you to look for a specific information on my channel. I will initially post uh, these three videos in which I will cover how to start this plane from the cold and dark state, how to make a flight plan and how to configure the FMS or the flight management system. Then the second video will be for the autopilot and the last one will be for the ILS approach and landing. Plus, I will also upload videos related to RNAV approach, um, VR approach and uh, the VR navigation. So in this video, I will tell you how to start this plane from the cold and dark state and how to configure the FMS. But in order to configure the FMS, you should make a flight plan first. So for the flight planning, I'm actually using the Microsoft Flight Planner, the default flight planner for the Microsoft Flight Simulator and uh, it's compatible with it. You can easily make a flight plan over here. If you're really familiar with this process, you can just skip this part and you can just jump on to the next section. First of all, let's select the aircraft and the aircraft is going to be Vision Jet. So let's uh, select Vision Jet. I will be using the executive seating version and for the route, I will be doing the short flight from uh, Heathrow to Manchester. So let's select the origin and the destination is Manchester. So now you have the flight plan. And uh, first of all, let's select the departure procedure, which is the SID standard instrument departure. Then you can select the route. And uh, uh, for the route, you have this uh, uh, purple line. And then the green one is uh, the arrival and uh, the orange one is the approach. So let's um, have a look at the approach that uh, do we really need to change anything over here or not. So as I've been flying this route a lot, so that's why I know that this is not correct because after 10, uh, you have to, you know, uh, get the vectors from the ATC for the final approach. For this, uh, just simply click this option ILS 23, right? Because I will be performing an ILS approach and landing and select transition MCT. MCT is actually a VR over here as a beginner. If you're not really familiar with VR, it's actually very high frequency omnidirection range. So it's a, a ground-based navigation device which emits radio signals and the planes just uh, follow the radio signals and they do the navigation. So for this flight, actually from then, you go to this point MCT and then you proceed with the approach. So this is how you probably upload this pr uh, procedure. You can see it's there. So now you have uh, the set, you have uh, the set in the red color and uh, the star in green color which is uh, the standard terminal arrival and then you have the approach and in the purple you have the rest of the flight plan. Now let's uh, also get the fuel because it's important you have to set the fuel in the electronic flight bag. Average fuel burn if you're going with the maximum uh, thrust um, for this plane it's 200 to 210 kilograms uh, per hour. So I will not be going with the full thrust um, I've done flights, it's roughly 50 to 60%. So to be on the safer side, I will just keep 180 kilograms per hour. And uh, the contingency fuel is set to auto, 23 kilograms of extra will be carried. If, but if you want to change, you can just change it. And uh, then the final reserve, it's also auto, 136 kilograms. So we have some additional fuel. So the total block fuel is 299 kgs, or I can just make it like 300 kgs in the plane to be on the safe side. Let's uh, save this flight plan. I will save it, uh, save it with this name, uh, EGLL to EGCC Vision Jet. That's it. Now let's uh, go to the plane and uh, configure the FMS and start the plane from the cold and dark state. So this is the Vision Jet at Heathrow. Now let's uh, start removing the covers. First of all, pitot tube, and let's remove the shocks. You have to go a bit near. And then there is cover on the engine. You have to remove it and then you can open the door. The pilot will automatically not enter the plane. You have to press shift C for this and the door will be closed automatically. Once inside the cockpit, you have to remove the spin for the parachute, which you can activate above 600 feet in case the engine fails or any other failure. So this uh, plane has a parachute. That's it. And now you have removed these two pens. Um, in the cockpit, you will see these two screens and the prime flight display on the left hand side and the navigation display on the right hand side. And then you have uh, three further screens uh, in order to basically control what kind of information you want to see on the PFD and the ND. Uh, before I do anything, let's make sure 
that uh, the thrust lever is in the idle position. The fuel control is auto, not towards left or right, because then it will be automatically burning the fuel from both of the wings. And uh, the flaps are retracted, and plus the parking brakes are active. Now, let's press shift 1 and go over here, turn on the battery, and turn on the generator. Now, you have some power in the plane. Before I proceed, uh, let's uh, set the fuel in the plane. Over here, if you go to this option, flight performance um, for the fuel. Now, it's uh, showing in pounds. Now, let me just change the units. Weight in kgs. That's it. So, the fuel is already 309 kilograms. I can just like, move the slider. 301 kilograms. It's okay. So, we can just keep it like this. Now, I can just go back and uh, do the flight plan and load the flight plan. The one that we already made in the Microsoft Flight Planner. And uh, the altitude will be... 20,000. So, flight level 200. That's it. So, this flight plan is there. I can uh, send uh, this route to avionics. And uh, that's it. So, it should be loaded over here. Let's wait for it. Yeah, that's it. So, this is actually the control for the zoom. You can see this flight plan is there. That's it. Now, I can get rid of this electronic flight bag. And uh, one more thing that you have to do. Just turn on the strobe and uh, let's... Uh, Turn on the engine. So Heathrow Airport information. Mike one two zero zero Zulu. Wind tree zero zero at eight. Visibility six. Sky condition. Few clouds at two. Let me just change the radio frequency. Now it's uh, time to start the engine. So just get rid of this controller, and you see this knob. Just move it to run, and uh, then press this button. Engine start and stop. And now you will see that the engine is running. Now you will keep on getting alerts over here. So you have to get rid of them one by one. So let's uh, turn on the master oxygen and uh, the fresh air. And no need uh, to turn on the probe heat right now, just right before the takeoff. Then you can turn it on and anti-ice as required. You can just turn it on. That's it. Now you have this knob. You can control uh, the backlight for this uh, panel if you want. And then this is uh, the checklist option. If you click this, the checklist appears. But uh, over here in this Microsoft Flight Simulator version, this checklist is not fully functional. So I can just right now get rid of it. If I press this button PFT, I can just... Press full and you will have the prime flight display on the full screen. Now we have to do some uh, flight initialization. If you go to this middle screen, or rather I will just take you through these two screens. Uh, this is actually, as I told you before, uh, you can control uh, the type of information you want to show it on the PFD and the ND. So right now for this screen, PFD is selected. And whatever you will do over here, uh, changes will be made over here. And uh, for this screen, uh, you can control the multifunction display. And uh, you can also use the PFD, but no need for this uh, PFD. You can just change it to MFD. That's it. And uh, on this uh, side, the first officer side, you have uh, the navigation uh, and communication control. So I think it's a, it's a good, comfortable view. You can just keep it like this. Now on this screen, on the navigation display, you will see the flight plan and on the right hand side, you will see the aircraft status. You can again press full and you can see the full screen or whether you can, uh, whether if you want to change um, uh, or switch between this view, you can do this by clicking this option. Then if you see this knob, uh, you can just move it left and right and you can just switch between these two panels. Now this panel is selected I can just have traffic or weather or whatever the information I just want over here. I can just show it. And if I want 
the aircraft systems, I can just like select any of the aircraft systems that I just want to see over here. That's it. Now for the flight plan, if you go to this option or before going to the flight plan, let's uh, go to the initialization and let's see if uh, the initialization is complete or not. I can click this in it and you will see the flight plan is ready. Takeoff data is ready. All we have to do is just set the fuel. So simply uh, fuel on board sink and you have 320 kgs and confirm and that's it. And uh, you can just go back and now you will see the weight and balance is there and the flight plan is also there. The takeoff data is also there. You can accept this initialization and that's it. And uh, sorry, and just go back. I will just uh, change it, aircraft systems, aircraft status, and let's change this panel. Now, now, over here in the flight plan, you can see that all of the flight plan is there. And if you click this option procedure, you will see that the departure procedure is already selected. If I bring up uh, the electronic flight bag, you will see Umla 1F. It's already selected. You can click it. And if you want to change, you can just change it. And uh, a transition umlaut is also there. This is the first waypoint after the takeoff. Runway selected 27 right, and that's it. If you want to look at this departure procedure on uh, your screen, you can just uh, click this option preview, show on map, and this will be shown on the map. And then you can just like remove this departure if you want, or you can just like click this option again, off, and you will be back to the map mode. Now for the arrival again, uh, elvo one m as you can see, arrival procedure is there. So uh, arrival is selected. And uh, let me just go back again. And uh, no transition, that's it. You can just go back. So preview, again, you can just pre uh, preview this uh, departure procedure. If you go back, you can also look at the approach. Now for the approach, you can see runway 23 right is selected. And uh, the transition is MCD and uh, minimums i can set it once i'm uh, performing an ILS approach and landing but right now it's not required um, and uh, i can just remove it or activate it if i activate it right now the plane will straight away go to this approach which we don't want to do so you don't have to do anything it's uh, already there everything all the flight plan is there although i will be making another video in which i will tell you how you can enter the flight plan over here now that's it. As uh, a beginner, uh, I think this is more than enough for you uh, to start this plane from the cold and dark state to get the flight plan and then uh, fly this plane on autopilot and then you can perform an ILS approach and landing. But uh, there are so many other things which you can just explore over here on these screens. Uh, you can even go to the procedures from here. You can um, uh, look at the performance information here. Uh, this is one more thing, speed bugs. You can just uh, turn on the speed bugs during the flight over here on this uh, speed indicator you will see different bugs um, if I turn it all on and for the takeoff on this is basically the speed at which you should rotate and this is 85 knots so it's good it's there uh, this is the climb speed if I just go back I will show it to you in the flight plan you have this VNAV and then there are different profiles. For the VNAV, this is actually a point where you will start to descend towards the runway. So it will tell you how much vertical speed or the descent rate is required, uh, how far is the top of descent in, in terms of time, and is there any vertical deviation from the vertical path or not. So VNAV is enabled. Uh, the speed is 165 knots. So once the plane will start to follow this vertical profile, the speed will be at 165 knots. But if you want to change, you can just change it. But I just keep it like this. Then for the climb, you have uh, speed 165 knots. As you can see, it's set to 165 knots. Uh, below 10,000 uh, feet, the plane can go up to 250 knots. But if you have set the climb to 265 knots, then it will not go into 250 knots. That's the trick in this plane. So after the takeoff, when you will uh, activate the autopilot, it will keep on climbing at 165 knots. And for this, you have to activate this option, flight level change. This will maintain the speed. And again, for the cruise, it's 200 knots. And for the descent, it's uh, 200 knots. And below 10,000 feet, it's uh, 250 knots. If you want to change it, you can change it. Let's say if you want to keep it at 200 also, that's it. Because you know what happens is this, that, you know, um, press enter and just like go back at 200 feet. 
so 200 knots uh, below 10000 feet so what happens is is that the plane keeps on descending at 200 knots but once it goes below 10000 feet it increases speed to 250 so you don't want this to happen and terminal area speed um at 3000 feet uh 200 knots you can also change it if you want that's it so these are some speed controls uh, for the autopilot that's what you can just do over here uh then uh, another thing just uh, make sure uh, that you also have uh, the transponder on if you click this option you can uh, turn it on right now the transponder is on and then you can just enter uh, the transponder code and press enter and now the transponder is also there now we have to set the trim uh, for the takeoff as you see pitch trim so whether to pitch up or pitch down this actually controls the elevators so just make sure that you have this arrow in the middle in the green area you will see the color will also change let's keep it in the middle let's say at 4 degrees so 4 degrees pitch up that's it and uh, the roll trim is in the middle flaps uh, for the take off you have to set it to 50% as you can see flaps to 50% that's it and uh, let's turn on the lights for the landing and for the ice and that's it and uh, just right before the take off as i told you before uh, you can just turn on the probe heat heat for the pitot tube and uh, that's it and uh, the anti ice protection is also on as it's really cold nowadays we have to turn the icing on so that's it um these are the settings that are required to basically configure the uh, flight management system and uh, this is how you start this plane from the cold and dark state it's bit easy not that difficult if you know it <laughs> If you have any questions you can ask me in the comment section or if you want to add uh, anything to this video the comment section is there for you thank you very much for watching this video have a nice day hope to see you soon